all ready, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so I just finished making these graphs from uh, Mexican twine American hot dogs. I do want to make two other points that I, I thought in between making this video and when I turned the camera off. Uh, one way you can check these is if you have to do two graphs like this, not that they normally make you do that, but one if one cur currency depreciates, the other has to appreciate. They can't both work in the same direction. Okay, This is a little zero-sum game. One guy's going up, the other guy's going down. Um, the other thing is, sometimes on the AP test they'll say to you, I want to know what happens to the supply of American dollars. Well, to get appreciation like this, the supply of American dollars has to decrease. Uh, and it has to do with a different way of looking at the dollars in this foreign exchange market. But if you follow the rule uh, and you know that I should get appreciation, then you should be able to figure out, okay, I'll just move the supply curve in the opposite direction or whatever the, the question is dictating to you. Um, now, the real question is, how the heck do these relate to this guy? This should be familiar to you. This is going to be our Mexican economy graph. Do you know what condition the Mexican economy is according to my graph that I have drawn? Well, it's in pretty good condition. It's in long-run equilibrium. It's producing at its fullest uh, output possible. Um, it's at its natural rate of unemployment, however you want to look at it. So we are going to ignore this guy down here, and we're going to talk about what does a depreciating currency mean here? Well, what you have to think of is uh, this net export here. So what's going to happen to Mexico's uh, ability to import and export here now that it has a weaker <laughs> currency? That's weaker. <laughs> If you have a weak currency, are you going to be able to buy a lot of stuff with that? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Not going to be able to buy anything. So you're probably not going to do a lot of, I'll say, less uh, importing. I tried to write export there, but less importing. You're not going to be able to buy from other people because your currency is weak. So their stuff looks really, really expensive. In the flip, though, since your country is weak, eh, uh, that means that people are going to want to come to you because your stuff now looks really, really cheap. So they're going to do more exporting due to this currency here, which means that their net export, uh, the balance between exports and imports, exports minus imports, exports is getting bigger and imports is getting smaller. That means net exports got to be going up. So your AD curve goes to the... Right. What happens to their output? Looks to be increasing, which means that their unemployment is going down. And this is one of the reasons that you see some countries, uh, when they have economic turmoil, they try to devalue their currency so that they can get this bump here by exporting more. Uh, China historically has been a guilty party of this. Um, but other countries do it as well. Uh, so here's, you got to know the link between these two. And if you were appreciating, it would just work in the opposite direction. You do more importing and less exporting. Your AD curve will go to the left. Again, questions, please ask them. Bring your stuff to class tomorrow. If you uh, bring any topics you want to talk about tomorrow to class, I wish you guys the best of luck. Good night.